What's up people? It's time for the very first AMA here at Rauta. So there's not much opinions or anything like that to be shouted. Uh, two things first and foremost. There's some questions I'm gonna answer this time and also uh, announce the winners from the last year's last video that is AMA 52 and 2017. So um, I picked a couple of uh, winners for these these babies, so to speak. Um, there was two comments which kind of were, you know had more uh, content than maybe the rest of, of the comments. So the winners get to get these two CDs: uh, Rianos Satan Alafidis Black Metal and Damnation Defaced Melodic Death Metal of German quality. And uh, there were two comments which I kind of liked more. One was by Juri Sallinen from Finland and the other was uh, Stulle666 from uh, some country I haven't even figured out yet. So you two winners please send me your address and I will send you these CDs one per person and uh, who knows which one you're gonna get. That's up to my choosing, I guess. Uh, but any, anyway, congrats for the win. And should we get more nice extra copies or actual extra copies this year, we will keep these random giveaways going in the future as well. Now, uh, we have had some six days of 2018 and uh, world still haven't collapsed. So let's drink to that. Now there were a couple of questions which I kind of already answered in the comments, but they're worth uh, you know going through here as well. One of the questions was pretty much on time about new summoning album. You know the Tolkien infused fantasy black metal, and are we gonna review it? I would gladly review summoning. It's a very interesting and very unique band, but the thing is that. Uh, the label uh, Napalm Records isn't exactly a fan of uh, sending physical copies of their releases. The only one which I guess I really uh, received last year for review was Satyricon and uh, the rest more like just kind of, you know, the requests for promo CDs and whatnot just basically vanished in the thin air. But in general, I can say Napalm Records does not send uh, physical copies anymore. And even with the digital ones, they're really, really picky. So I guess that kind of answers that question. No CD, no review. That's the policy over here because digital reviews don't make much sense in the sense of unboxing and going through the physical form. Now, the other question uh, I received earlier was um, that we should, or why are not we not uh, uh, reviewing LPs or other vinyl uh, releases and also tapes. Now the thing is pretty much the same as with uh, Napalm Records. Most of the labels releasing uh, LPs vinyl EPs or whatever, they don't, you know, release those uh, CDs for promotion because the, just mailing those are so goddamn expensive and we are way too small a channel for labels to get interested in that. Even with the CDs and we know it's really small cost for them. I've been in the kind of this industry so many years that I know these and all these bullcrap excuses won't, you know, fool me anymore. Thing is, some labels just want to stick to the digital files and digital promos, so tapes are mostly no-go and that even further, even more it applies to vinyl releases. That's unfortunate as it gets. And on top of that, I don't even currently have uh, 
tape player or vinyl player anymore. But then again, we could, you know, do unboxing and, you know, review the material from digital files if that was the case, but unfortunately it is not. Uh, if it was up to me, I could basically unbox all kind of releases for people to actually see what's inside. You know, kind of a Visivik, what you see is what you get kind of a deal here. I would, you know, just love to, you know, show you what you got and even, you know, send the extra stuff away as giveaways or whatever. But the thing is, we live in a world which is very much digital these days. And according to some labels, it's getting even more digital in the future. That means some labels just don't give a rat's bottom about um, physical copies. And I'm not talking just about mainstream labels here. I'm talking about kind of a mid-sized labels, not exactly underground anymore, but not just, you know, those big three or four major ones to which uh, metal music is just kind of a, a side dish in a way. I'm talking about labels which just, you know, get their people fed with uh, or buy metal music and making metal releases and uh, who do it by, you know, releasing death metal, black metal, trash metal, two metal, kind of more on the extreme side rather than, you know, putting out yet another mainstream metal core act or whatever. So the thing is, even some of those labels just believe that it's all digital here. It's all about Spotify, YouTube, Deezer, Pandora, whatever. And it's not just, you know, people supporting the scene and buying those physical uh, releases, be it vinyl, CD, tape, doesn't really matter. So that is the world we are living in right now. And of course, this varies very much from label to label about what kind of policy they have. Not just only promotional copies, of course, but you know, just you know, what kind of uh, business they are doing. And be that as it may, this not only applies to you know the true uh, scene maniacs who just, you know, do this stuff for living, but, you know, I mean, that's a hobby, not as a, like a day job, uh, or be, you know, big labels, mainstream ones even. It doesn't matter, it just, you know, this all goes, basically, people paying their bills and, you know, some cutting their expenses and all that stuff. So the boring thing is money spins the world even when it comes to metal music. That applies to many underground bands, even though they might not, you know, totally discuss about it. They might, you know, like admit it. They might even go as far as deny it. But the thing is, those who know, know, and that, that is the truth. And people can be as blind as they want or choose to be about you know, this kind of money-infused world, but the thing is, money kicks your bottoms and everything else is just secondary. It doesn't matter if you're the most ideological person in the world or you have your high ideals or I do have them or principles or whatever. Money runs this and that's business as it is and, you know, that's the reason of uh, many things we have here. Uh, curiously enough, the thing is that YouTubers are considered by many places as influencers, and I'm not just talking about Rauta here because we're just, you know, small time hobby thing here, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. That's why I can say this pretty much because we don't have these kind of a dependencies on anything. But the thing is that, you know, when YouTube channels go, grow big enough, then they start to make a difference. And that's when the label's mindset can kind of a shift, you know. And so we live in interesting times. How much digital is going to be when you are big enough and all that stuff. And how much weight some artist or band actually has when they are big enough. And all this becomes kind of a interesting mess or chaos where, just, you know, money is the big supreme leader and all that is there is. But I kind of lost with my thoughts. There, Those were the answers I wanted to give to your very 
few questions and uh, I guess it's time to say this again but happy 2018 may or year of metal be good may you find many interesting albums because at least seems that already the beginning of the year will be very very interesting there are already quite a few um, interesting albums out and there are lots of stuff still from 2017 to be go through so keep your eyes and ears open and uh, as always stay metal <laughs>